Hey now, this is Omnidog. Welcome to Omnidog's Vault. Thanks for tuning in. This is another episode of Root Beer Reviews. Got my root beer? Gonna take a sip? Excuse me. I love root beer. It loves me. We're gonna be reviewing two books that are both are kind of under the radar. One has a very famous writer, but I think maybe it's uh, not gotten as much public publicity as it deserves. Um, but I think that once it gets into the hands of people, that will change. First book we're going to review, Lady Mechanica. That's a little bit under the radar. And then the other book we're going to view, review is Roughneck by Jeff Lemire. The only reason I think it's under the radar is it's just... Um, I haven't seen it uh, on any best of lists yet. And once it gets out there and gets into the hand of reviewers, it will be on best of lists. It's that good. But we will start with Lady Mechanica. Let's make sure I have them in the right order. One, two, and three. Lady Mechanica, drawn, written, and created by um, my iPhone that's going off right in the middle of this review. So you can see how professional I am. I'm not even going to edit this out because, quite frankly, I don't know how. So maybe in the future I can, but uh, right now I can't. Lady Mechanica, um, written, drawn, and created by Joe Benitez. And we'll start out with the art because that is the business, as they say. This uh, artwork is really, really astonishing. And it is gorgeous. It's got a little bit of a muted color palette right here, but there's Lady Mechanica. Lady Mechanica woke up one day with no memory, mechanical limbs, and augmented eyes in Victorian England steampunk era 1880s-ish. But it's very much, as, as you can tell by everything here, it's a steam... You can see her eyes right there. there she's got augmented vision. It's very much a steampunk probably one of the best steampunk books I've ever read. Um, Lady Mechanica has no memory of what happened to her. She was the victim of a mad scientist experiment where she has those mechanical limbs and augmented eyes and she spends all three books trying to figure out who she is, who she was, and what happened. But the artwork is nothing short of spectacular as you can see right here that Joe Benitez uh, knows how to draw. That is one thing I can say with a surety. This guy knows what's going on because it is a fabulously drawn book. Let me peel off the post-it and show you this amazing piece right here. Not only is Lady Mechanica a strong female protagonist, but all the and almost all of the antagonists in this book are strong females who are very much uh, quick on their feet. Lady Mechanica kicks ass, and so do her foes. Uh, her foes um, are people who want to get a hold of her, take her apart, see what makes her tick, and of course turn her into a weapon. Uh, that's kind of the overarching theme of the story itself. Um, someone is taking people turning them into mechanized humans. And there are other people that want to find out how that's being done so they can turn them into weapons. And um, this is one of her foes in the beginning of the book. This is what he, lo he looked normal beforehand, but this is what he looks like now after getting caught in a tangle with Lady Mechanica. As you can see, He's got an iron jaw, and I think he's missing some other things on him, too. He walks with a cane. Lady Mechanica takes butt, kicks butt, and takes no prisoners. She doesn't take butt and kick prisoners. She kicks butt and takes no prisoners. There's also a little bit of humor in this book with her sidekick, who's an inventor, um, who happens to be a drunk and an in inventor, but he's very much... Uh, Lady Mc right there you can see him Lady Mechanica's uh, friend who has helps her 
with all kinds of his gadgets and there's a shot of the strong female antagonist um, and here's a really beautiful drawing of an airship a steam this is puts the steam in the steampunk aesthetic um, check this baby out that's some intricate drawing right there um, and it's quite remarkable uh, the drawing that Joe Benitez does now what's the story like um, I like the story it was fun not everything has to be Watchmen or Dark Knight Returns or Mouse uh, sometimes you need a good popcorn movie even after you've seen Casablanca and Citizen Kane you still need kind of lighter fun stuff and that's what this is Lady Mechanica is interesting fun and fun to read very fun to look at and it's well written I think Joe Benitez does a good job writing this first adventure that she gets on um, which is pretty remarkable um, that he can write and draw so unlike some other creators who can draw but can't write this guy can write and a little bit later on in the book the uh, colors by Peter Steigerwald start to pop and it's very pretty you can see that this guy knows his colors it goes from muted to colorful as the situation warrants it and um, here's another one of my favorite um, parts with Lady Mechanica in it in the first book I love this drawing right here I'll get it straight one of these days there we go so, um, not everything has to be deep, several layers deep and everything. Sometimes you just need a fun adventure. These are fun adventures. I really enjoyed the first book. The second one was written by M.M. Chen. Joe Benitez turned over the second one called The Tablet of Destinies. Um, Joe Benitez turned over the um, writing to M.M. Chen. Um, it's a little heavier handed. Uh, the color palette's a little darker. The story is longer, a little more complicated. And she she generally goes uh, from trouble spot to trouble spot. But along the way, there you can see some of the gadgets. Along the way, she runs into other strong female protagonists that help her out, that she's able to help out. It does happen organically. It does flow. Um, it is a little wordier, the Tablet of Destinies. The Tablet of Destinies, yeah. Here's her uh, female protagonist in this one. Um, they tend to be very ruthless, these female uh, antagonists. And here's a really cool shot. In midair, while hanging on to her protege, Winifred, also known as Fred. She's in midair, in flight, by herself, dealing with all these guys <laughs> beating the crap out of all these guys that are ganging up on her and Fred. Uh, this is one of my favorite panels because she's, uh, you know, falling in the sky before her uh, apparatus can start up again. And she's, she's uh, kicking butt right there. So Lady Mechanica is definitely worth your while because now here's another protag uh, strong female protagonist that she runs into that ends up helping her and um, it's a little bit of a tangled story what what it has to do with the tablet of destinies it's got a little bit of um, an Indiana Jones feel to it but um, and then the third book is the lost boys of West Abbey which primarily focuses on boys who are missing and of course trying to be turned into some type of mechanized beings um, that's what she's battling. The, the overarching themes are um, turning uh, people into mechanized animal weapons and where did she come from? How did she become who she is? Uh, I like Lady Mechanica a lot. I think you should give it a chance. Um, it's light and fun and uh, is just very enjoyable. I dug it a lot. So that's Lady Mechanica. Now, Here's a book that's a little heavier, not weight-wise, but subject-wise. And nobody does Frozen Tundra and 
hardcore feelings of people of Canada like Jeff Lemire. This is Roughneck, and as you can see, uh, it's a fairly thick uh, graphic novel, very nicely done, very nice paper, and um, now Jeff Lemire's artwork is not for everyone, but I will tell you this, he can get more use out of eyebrows than I think anybody else can. He conveys what he lacks in maybe um, dynamic character poses. He makes up for in dynamic facial expressions on his characters. Just with their eyebrows, he conveys a great sense of emotion. The book is done in this sort of black and blue and white, little washed out color palette of blue. Um, but you can see Look at that guy. Do you want to mess with that guy? No, not really. Um, let me read to you what the story's about so you get an idea. Derek Ule's glory days are behind him. His hockey career ended a decade earlier in a violent incident on ice. Since then, he's been living off his reputation in the remote northern community where he grew up, drinking too much and fighting anyone who crosses him. But he never counts on his long-lost sister Beth showing up one day out of the blue, back in town, and on the run from an abusive boyfriend. Looking to hide out for a while, the two siblings hunker down in a secluded hunting cabin deep in the local woods. It's there that they attempt to find a way to reconnect with each other and the painful secrets of their past, even as Beth's ex draws closer and closer. So, um, this book is uh, raw. It is spare, it's sparse, it's haunting, it feels haunted, um, even though the uh, a lot of it takes place, almost all of it takes place in the outdoors, it feels very closed in, uh, as in a place you can't escape from. So um, that's the, the quiet surroundings, they're, they're quiet, they are constantly, um, you're constantly hearing the crunching of snow, um, you're, you're constantly seeing the same um, water tower, uh, the town, welcome to the town sign, the same hockey rink, the same bar. You see them in different settings and they take on different meaning every time, but it gives you a feeling of, e even though they're in the great uh, white north, that they are uh, trapped. So... Derek is trying to, both of Derek and his sister Beth, called Bethy in this, are um, kind of, they meet up after not having seen each other in a number of years, they meet up uh, when they're both at rock bottom. And when you get a sense, look at this picture, you get a sense of a guy you do not want to mess with. So you may not dig Lemire's drawings, but boy, do they can. They convey emotion like nobody's business. That's a guy you're not interested in messing with, and people that do generally end up with blood all over them. Um, one of the interesting things that goes on is even though the story is told in this blue uh, and black and white tale, the flashbacks that, that let you in on why... Um, why those two uh, are like they are, Derek and uh, Beth, lets you in on why the flashbacks that, that tell you um, what's created them and then their circumstances are color. And I thought that was an interesting touch to have the flashbacks in color, but the main story be in this sort of black, bluish, and white. Uh, you learn quickly that they are victims of an abusive father. Um, there are a couple of scenes where it becomes clear that um, Derek was created by an abusive father and Beth was the victim too. Um, here's a page where you actually see Derek's face show a little, something other than anger. Uh, it's concern. He, when Beth shows up, She's, um, I don't want to give too much away, but she's not in a good way. Her ex-boyfriend's after her. She's walked away from a bad relationship, and her ex-boyfriend's after her. Um, <clears throat> they go hiding in the woods, uh, in a cabin in the woods, to uh, try and get things figured out. Uh, they have a local friendly cop and um, uh, another friend of theirs that owns the cabin that's trying to help them. Uh, but this ex-boyfriend is very much like 
Beth's father. She seems to be drawn to men that uh, are not particularly nice guys. Here is some compassion on Derek's face. As you can see, for the first time, he and Beth are really connecting. After not having seen each other for so long, they're really connecting. And uh, Derek is softening a little. Now, uh, the book's about rediscovery of family, of what's important, of who they can count on. Um, it's, it's a very, very well written. Of course, it's Jeff Lemire. He's one of the best writers out there. Um, it's very well written, very emotional, and I didn't cry at the end like I did with Sweet Tooth, but I was still moved to the point where I was almost choked up. Very moving book very well told. Uh, I really enjoyed the part with um, where they showed the flashbacks that created them to be who they are in color. It's almost like they hold on to those memories of these as the only thing that's real as opposed to their lives that are messed up now. Maybe that's the message he's trying to convey. That's why they're in color. Uh, but as far as color palette goes, that's it right there. Um, so, you know, maybe they hang on to it um, because of that. Uh, I, I can't recommend this book highly enough. Uh, it's a fast read. It uh, it's, uh, doesn't take a long time to get through it. But I think once you read through it once, you're going to want to go through it again because you may have at the end, you may see things that you want to go back and pick up on. I won't tell you how it ends or whether or not it's a tale of redemption or not, because that's going to be up to you to determine as you read the book and you read uh, all the way through to the end of the story. But Roughneck by Jeff Lemire, uh, I can't recommend it enough. I started one or two pages and got immediately sucked in and burn through it in a couple hours. If you're a fast reader, you may read it even faster. But I wouldn't go too fast because you want to chew your food before you swallow it and eat it. You want to digest this book properly. Don't burn through it or you're going to miss some of the subtle touches in it. It's very, very well written and very well done with a very deep, meaningful core in it. So I would highly recommend both Lady Mechanica and Roughneck. And I'm going to take a break for a second, get some of my root beer. Because I've been yapping for 15 minutes and I'm about myself and stuff. So if you get a chance, if you like this video, leave me a note. Tell me if you want me to review anything else. Uh, also, other good YouTubers, Gabe Infinity Watch, he's a friend of mine on YouTube. A Week in Geekdom, covers all things geeky. Hardcover Reviews, he's well known and uh, does a good job. And then the man who started it all, the Omnibus Collector, Riley Moore. Give those guys a shot and listen to what they have to say. They're all really good guys and they've all got really good insights into comics. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I appreciate every kind comment that you leave. Please don't leave any mean comments. I can't take it. I just can't. Okay, sorry. Uh, so uh, until next time, this is Omnidog and Omnidog's Vault signing off, saying peace and love, peace and love.